DNX wants to know, one of my motors cuts out at higher RPMs after a hard crash. No visible damage. I can't feel any drag. The ESC looks fine and no continuity from the XT60 lead to the solder points. Is the motor dead? I mean, something's dead, right? It's either the motor or the ESC and the way to, uh, the way to fix that or figure that out is to swap the motor and see if the question, uh, if the uh, motor st- works again or not. If you swap the motor and it doesn't work, then it's the ESC. Giesenberg says, I have a VFly whoop store, but the battery voltage reported by the whoop store is very different than the battery voltage that shows up in the OSD. What's up with that? So Giesenberg, there's two things to say about that. The first is that when the charger is charging the battery, the voltage that you see will be higher than the battery's resting voltage. Think about it. If the battery is at 4.0 volts and the charger wants to make current flow into the battery, the charger has to apply a voltage higher than 4.0 volts. So during the charge cycle, you will often see the voltage be higher, but then if you were to unplug the battery and put it on a checker, it would be lower. At the end of the charge cycle, though, when the battery is finished charging, the voltage should read correctly. Okay, so that's the first thing. There's a lot of times on my whoop store where I'm charging a battery to 4.35, but the whoop store is at 4.38. It's not overcharging the battery. It is trying to push current into the battery to get the battery to go up to 4.35. Although, shouldn't it have switched to constant voltage? Shouldn't it have switched? I don't know about that. That's an interesting question. The other thing is that, so let's say that now at the end of the charge cycle, the whoop store says charging is done and it's reading 4.35, but you plug it in and it's reading 4.30. Well, the thing to do is to take a multimeter and test and see who's right. So your, your flight controller could also be out of calibration. Let's see here. Dangster FPV wants to know if a camera mounted under the drone gives better flight performance than the top of the drone due to center of gravity and so on. Uh, Dangster FPV, uh, this is probably an example of something known as the rocket pendulum fallacy. The idea being that the weight being under the drone will like tend to make it settle and the weight being over the drone will like tend to make it fall over. And the, 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 the truth is that that doesn't work like that. And explaining why it doesn't work like that is way outside the realm of this spreadsheet. Uh, this spreadsheet, why did I say spreadsheet? Way outside the realm of this live stream. Um, there's a great video made about the rocket pendulum fallacy by Tom Stanton. This is my favorite one. It's not the only one, but I think it's the best. Tom Stanton does a video showing why the rocket pendulum fallacy, how it works and so on. And the conclusion is that having the weight below or or above does not make the drone want to tip over or make it want to fall back into place. Here's an example of his test. Um, In this test, if I remember correctly, he is, you, you think to yourself, well, obviously the drone just flew away. He doesn't have the flight controller active. The motors are just spinning at constant speed, if, if my memory is correct. It's been a while since I watched this. And there is no tendency of the drone to settle in any particular direction. It just takes off and flies away. So he's showing that the pendulum fallacy is false. And that's why it's called the pendulum fallacy. Um, So as far as mounting the camera above or below, uh, it does affect like where the camera is, but it doesn't affect how the drone flies. What, What affects how the drone flies is how far the weight is from the center of gravity. That has an effect on flight performance. But being above or below the CG, I don't think it matters.
Eagle, a Eagle Ash, or however you say that name. What's the best price to performance flight controller for 5 inch FPV? In my opinion, it has got to be the Speedy B F4. That's it. It's an easy answer. Let's get this question from Timon's FPV that I clicked on by accident. What sticky battery straps and pads do you recommend? Um, you can buy Umma Grip, but there are also a other people are now making it. Like, for example, Rotoriot has a sticky battery pad. Rotoride has a sticky battery pad. You're, you can't see this. Um, I think Flywoo makes one. Flywoo Ultra Grip battery pad. Yep, that's the same stuff. The original is Umma Grip sticky battery pad. Those are the three that come to my mind. I'm sure there are others. If I just search for super sticky battery pad, what do we find? It's all um a grip. Damn, um a grip. Crushing the SEO. Here is some um a grip available on AliExpress. You were specifically asking about AliExpress. It looks like um a grip is available on AliExpress. I'm not sure how that works, but there you go. That's uh that's that's the answer to that question. Sky Sailor FPV wants to know are all capacitors round? No. Surface mount capacitors are rectangular. Um, PD Puff FPV wants to know, what's your take on the rumor that DJI is lowering the O3 price in August? Uh, that would be cool if that happened. I think any, I don't really think there's a lot more to say about it until it happens. I don't think some people, I did hear some people wondering, oh, does this mean that they're discontinuing the O3 or they're releasing a new, a new air unit? It seems early for that to happen. Just in DJI's product life cycle, there's a certain rhythm to it. And it seems early for them to be marking down, discontinuing and upgrading the O3. So I, who knows? <laughs> Tyler Getze says, I went from flying 1S Tiny Whoops to trying a 6S. I destroyed the drone. What's the best way to adjust between the two? I mean, I'm guessing that you just aren't as experienced with the 6S. You need to just get used to the, the way that it flies. That's just a matter of experience. You just need to be more careful and recognize that your, your, your familiar reflexes aren't going to work. You can't fly a 6S with your, with your Tiny Whoop reflexes, and you just need to slowly develop new reflexes and muscle memory. Argyle Sky FPV wants to know, what should I set the warning cell voltage in beta flight for a lithium ion pack? Um, I recommend 3.1-ish volts. Um, lithium ions will go down to between, let's say, 2.8 and 2.5 volts. The actual chemistry, the actual voltage where they drop out depends a lot on the, the individual battery. Personally, the other thing to keep in mind is that some 18650 cells aren't like really lithium ion chemistry and will sag out at 3.0 volts. So the first thing you got to do is you got to test it and risk killing the battery. You got to do a test where you fly the battery down to like 2.9 volts and see if it'll, if it's actually a lithium ion or if it drops out at 3.0 volts, like a lithium polymer battery. If you verify that it can actually go below 3.0 volts, then I, I personally, I think around 3.1 is where I would put the, it really depends though, because some batteries will go all the way down to 2.7 or 2.6, and some will go down to like 2.8 and then sag out. And you really have to test them to find out. 